We present Dega, the first system that controls 3D Gaussian splatting based on body pose to achieve real-time, photorealistic, full-body avatars. Our method controls digital avatars using only sparse motion vectors while keeping high-quality details. Based on tetrahedral cages, which transform 3D Gaussians and differentiable rasterizing, our method is promising to handle challenging cases like sliding garments. DEGA is based on 3D Gaussian splatting, a recent approach that extends surface splatting by Tsiker et al. to a 3D radiance field. 3D Gaussian splatting offers the speed and high-quality differentiable rendering necessary for photorealistic avatars. While 3D Gaussian splatting was designed for static scenes only, our method extended to applications like controllable characters. DEGA uses multi-view video captures from 200 synchronized cameras. The primary input to our method is the character pose as joint angle vectors, 3D facial key points, RGB ground truth and segmentation mask for better garment separation. As can be seen, DEGA produces photorealistic, drivable avatars that can represent a variety of motion. Now, we would like to walk you through our pipeline. We use tetrahedral cages for 3D Gaussian deformations. Each Gaussian, 3D mean mu, is a linear combination of tetrahedron vertices and barycentric coordinates. We additionally incorporate the scaling and rotation of a tetrahedron's deformation gradient J into the Gaussian covariance matrix sigma, modeling phenomena like stretching. Our method uses forward mapping. Thus, we start from the canonical space V. We additionally take the motion vector phi, phase embedding kappa, which is regressed from 3D key points, the auto-decoded color feature vector H, and the view direction D. We use triplets of small MLPs per layer. Let's call a single triplet a Gaussian net. Our method is very composable. Using Gaussian nets, we can independently model different parts of an avatar. In this case, we use four different Gaussian networks. One for the face part, another one models the upper garment, which in this case is a t-shirt, and the third one deals with lower garment. Finally, the last one models the body, which is marked by the blue color, and the regions under the garment marked by the gray color, where we inject additional Gaussians. However, we are not limited to only those parts. We could extend the model to hair, shoes, or other accessories. Those small MLPs in Gaussian net have three primary purposes. The first two networks, Psi and Pi, are responsible for geometry corrections. Based on the motion vector, they predict pose-dependent corrections to cage node positions as well as Gaussian positions, rotations and scales. Here, you can see the pose-dependent corrective field applied to the input cages deformed using LBS. The last network, Gamma, predicts per Gaussian color and opacity. We predict the Gaussian 3D mean based on cage-deformed positions and colorize the Gaussians. Finally, we obtain our predicted image using alpha blending based volumetric rendering from 3D Gaussian splatting. Here you can see the complete output of our model. Each layer is modeled by a separate Gaussian network, driven by a motion vector. Modeling each garment layer as a specialized network allows us to capture loose clothing like sweatpants. We compare DEGA to other state-of-the-art methods. The mesh-based body decoder method by Bagaut Dinov et al., denoted as BD, MVP by Lombardi et al., applied to full-body avatars, and the image condition approach DVA by Remeli et al. We compared our method against baselines trained on two types of geometry. High-frequency detail meshes using free-form deformation, denoted as FFD, and low-frequency ones marked as LBS. All the baselines initially use FFD meshes, which significantly improves the final results. However, those meshes require extensive iterative methods at the training time. Since DEGA requires a rough approximation of the geometry, we also train a version with LBS meshes whose level of detail is limited by the parametric body model. Here you can see a challenging sequence with loose garment. Method based on LBS meshes struggled to model loose garments like a skirt showing severe artifacts. On the other hand, 
Dega shows better results compared to body decoder and MVP using similar input and close performance to method that use FFD meshes. Garment decomposition is essential in modeling phenomena like sliding. We can see that single layer method do not model the skirt motion correctly. This sequence is characterized by very dynamic motion. Despite poorer training signals and using only sparse body joint angles for controlling, Dega correctly models garment sliding, motion and appearance. However, the level of detail on the garment, the wrinkles and self-shadows are still not handled properly compared to densely conditioned DVA. Finally, you can see that MVP does not capture the view-dependent effect correctly compared to body decoder or DEGA. The multi-layer nature of DEGA makes it trivial to decompose our model into different garments. Each part is independent and could be used as a graphics asset. Thank you for watching.